went up, missed, came down, and landed awkwardly on his left knee. Mm. That landing ruptured his ACL and MCL. And not just that, when he came back, he was forced to change his playstyle because he lost a significant chunk of his athleticism. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was corny as hell. <laughs> Alright ladies and gents, we're back at it like a crack at it. But another reaction is going to show the screen. Let's see what we're gonna react to this time. Hmm. I could do a try not to laugh. You could do a wrestling edition, which will more than likely get copyrighted. Or we could do battle rap. I haven't done a battle rap video in a while. Or I can do this just because I want to laugh. <laughs> Let's do this. Stupid NBA injuries that changed their careers forever. This is by Andy Hoops. You want to watch the original video? The link is in the goddamn bathroom stall, as always. Full screen is hope. Let go. A while back, I made a video about BJ Tyler, a player whose career ended because he fell asleep with an ice pack on his ankles. Dumbass. That silly little injury literally ended his NBA career. Throughout history, you fell asleep with an ice pack on your ankle, woke up with frostbite with your retarded ass. <laughs> That's no way to go out like a hero, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. You should have thought about that, man. Motherfucker did cold as balls before cold as balls is even a thing. That was tough. We've seen numerous times when an injury puts an end to a promising career. However, in this video, I want to take a look at some silly, stupid injuries that changed the course of a... By the way, if the video is lagging, that's OBS, not me. Then if, it, if it is, I thought I fixed it, but apparently not. I don't know. Player's career. Many of these injuries you're about to see could have been easily prevented too. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and without further ado, let's get started. Tony Allen. On January 10th, 2007, Tony Allen was a young lad on the Boston Celtics, having the best season of his career. It was looking good for a while, and he was making outstanding strides in his game. But then, in what seemed like a normal play in a regular season game, Allen got fouled by Steven Jackson out on the perimeter. The whistle was blown, the game was stopped. However, Allen, wanting to show off, decided to try and throw down a tomahawk. He went they lucky I ain't do a flying tomahawk and scout that motherfucking ass. You can't repo the assets of a dead man, bitch, sick, cheap asshole. Really, bro? You, you. He could have just stopped right then and there, bro. But no, you just sat there and tried to go for the dunk after the foul and tore your ACL, your MCL, your PCL, your LCL, whatever LCL, your meniscus. You tore every goddamn thing in that way, and now you ain't gonna never walk the same ever again. Never again. <laughs> I'm gonna put some ice on that shit, just don't fall asleep with it. Went up, missed, came down, and landed awkwardly on his left knee. Mm. That landing ruptured his ACL and MCL. And not just that, when he came back, he was forced to change his playstyle because he lost a significant chunk of his athleticism. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> that was corny as hell. People don't remember now, but back then, Allen was a high flyer. His upside was enormous due to his sheer athleticism. Since then, he reinvented himself to become a defensive stud. The grindfather that we all know and love. Because of that injury, Allen's entire career trajectory changed. He went from being an aspiring star to a defensive-minded player. He needed to do that to compensate for his diminished scoring role once he returned. When asked about how he rediscovered his place in the NBA, Allen responded, It was definitely a humbling experience to injure myself because around that time I was playing at a high level. 
Unfortunately, that happened, but like I say, it made me into the man I am today. My preparation beforehand is a lot different now. So basically, he's Pat Beverly, but before Pat Beverly. You see the reason why I can't... Oh, now I see why I can't shoot over those sometimes. It's because of your monkey ass in 2K. Dang it. It was you first, and then Pat Bev, and then John Wall. That's a triple whammy right there. God damn. Allen started taking care of his body a lot more, up until the end of his career. More importantly, he probably would not have turned into the defensive player we know him as today, had he never gotten injured. Darko Milicic. Darko is known for a lot of things, being- Being shot over. <laughs> Tall as you is, I still dunked on your monkey ass in 2K, Brad. The second pick after LeBron. Nice knowing you. On being one of the <laughs> biggest busts in NBA history, chugging a bottle of beer with no hands, and of course, the first player from the 03 class to win a championship. By doing absolutely fucking nothing. Though he didn't really have any impact. In the 04 playoffs, he only appeared in eight games and did not play more than three minutes in any game. Despite barely playing though, Darko still somehow managed to break his hand. It happened in Game 5, as the Pistons were blowing out the Lakers en route to the title. Darko played just two minutes in that final game, and he apparently broke his hand during that short span. What happened? They passed him the ball and he just... And the shit just flew right into the goddamn ball or something? How are you that big but your hands that fragile is beyond me, bro. That's beyond me. This is what the report said. The second overall pick in the NBA draft was hurt at the end of the fifth and final game of the NBA Finals. It is not clear when during the game the injury occurred. He missed Thursday's parade celebrating the team's victory. To add on to the story, during an interview years later, Darko mentioned that he went to the sidelines to tell Larry Brown that his hand was broken. But Coach Larry Brown <laughs> did not believe him. He pushed him away and told him to get back into the game. A few seconds later, Darko aggravated the hand injury again. Keep in mind, this was all during garbage time. The Pistons were gonna win anyway, so this was all pointless. I can understand why Darko hated his time there though. Brown treated him like trash. It also led to a massive setback. The hand injury required surgery and caused him to miss over two months. It was even longer, actually. He had basically no time over the summer to train and get better. It didn't help that the Pistons did not give a crap about him. I think we give Darko too much flack. While he was drafted to a contender, it was a terrible situation for his personal development. Andrew Bynum Before we get to Andrew Bynum, let's talk about somebody else whose name starts with the letter A. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if Adam Morrison is on this list. <laughs> Remember Adam Morrison? Injured his own damn teammates by smelling like ass every game. Refused to wash his ass. So much so to the point where his teammates would kick him out of the locker room, throw some deodorant to him, and tell him, Bruh, wash your ass. And when he refused, they made him wash his ass. <laughs> this is hilarious. God damn it. And imagine... Being in the middle of a game, and you about to shoot a free throw right after you just got fouled, and Adam Morrison is right there to your left, and you try to shoot that ball. You shoot the ball, and he raises his hands. All you smell is big onion, and you miss the damn free throw. You tell him to put his arms down. You try to go for it again, but you miss the second free throw because this stupid ass decides not to put his arms down and kept him up the whole time. Imagine losing the game because of that. <laughs> God damn. I know he ain't going to be on this list. I just wanted to make that joke. You remember that massive trade involving Andrew Bynum and Dwight Howard? Well, Bynum got sent to the Philadelphia 76ers amongst a roaring crowd. And back in 2012, he was on his way to becoming the league's best center. It was him and Dwight Howard competing for that honor. That's why there was so much excitement in Philly, exemplified when a Sixers director made this infamous statement. This trade is the culmination of a very active offseason, one that we believe positions the Sixers for success this season and for many years to come. 
Why the fuck you lying? <laughs> He's a goddamn lie. When did he get drafted? I don't even remember. I just remember in NBA 2K 14, 15, and 16, the Sixers was one of the worst teams in the entire game. So don't give me that bullshit. The team was so goddamn bad, people did the Philadelphia 76ers challenge on Hall of Fame on 2K16. So don't give me that bullshit. As you can tell, the expectations for Bynum were sky high. Sadly, he never played a single game for them, and his career ended shortly after. Dang. Why? Apparently, while him and his friends were out bowling, he tweaked his knee. I thought he was about to say he tried to throw the ball and his fucking arm came out the socket. <laughs> I mean, either way, he probably would have ended up, ended up, he probably would have ended up retiring anyway off that shit. Bynum actually got injections to both his knees a few months prior, and he was supposed to be resting, according to the doctors. That injury from bowling was a huge setback, and the doctors said his knee swelled up and bruised. Over time, the cartilage in his knee weakened, and it wasn't getting any stronger as the months went by. His knees turned out to be degenerative, so even without this bowling incident, his career was on a timer. But this certainly ended it faster. Damn. It's kind of like a Tracy McGrady situation. Remember how fucked up his knees were? Yeah. I mean, you seen those games where he was just grabbing his knee? His career ended way too soon, bro. I would have loved more Tracy McGrady. Imagine, imagine T-Mac in today's game. Imagine him in today's day and age. How crazy he would go if he didn't fuck his knees up. Man. <laughs> I mean, if Derrick Rose can do it, McGrady can do it. I'm just saying, man. Imagine. Greg. Odin. Odin had a myriad of knee problems throughout his career, but the thing is, the first injury he suffered after getting drafted was <laughs> quite strange. Well, he looked like he did when the blunkins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't even gonna lie, bro. Look at his lips, bro. He looked like he eat ass, but the shit's still in it. That's tough. In September 2007, a month before his rookie season even started, Odin underwent a microfracture. If you don't know what a blunkin is, look it up. My hand ain't gonna tell you. What? Nasty bitch. For surgery on his right knee. It was surprising because there were no indications that Odin had knee problems prior to the draft. So what prompted him to get microfracture surgery right before the season? Apparently, he got injured from standing up from the couch. As he stood up, he felt something what? pop, and that's how he got his first major injury. Over the fuck, you do get drafted at thirty, bro? What? I... I mean, my knee pop on a day-to-day -day basis, but that don't mean I'm not gonna get into the game and play. What the hell? The years, oh. that injury snowballed and got worse and worse, as he had to get surgery on that same knee three different times, all leading back to this injury on the couch. Granted, considering how fragile he is, I don't think it mattered much. <laughs> it injured by laziness. Would have happened eventually, because his knee. Injured by watching TV. Knees are made of glass. Injured by playing video games. Kevin. Injured by. <laughs> Ah, shit. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh shit. He set himself up for failure on that one. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Kevin Johnson. I don't know who the fuck you is. Johnson. Despite the controversy of his post-career escapades, Kevin Johnson was an incredible point guard back in his day. Damn. However, his career was also marred with injuries. A bunch of miscellaneous, various injuries, all of which accumulated over the years, which led to his early retirement. The most serious one, though, started as a complete joke. In 1992, he suffered an undiagnosed sports hernia, reportedly because he would routinely lift up Oliver Miller during warm-ups, Mil Dumb ass. Miller weighed over 300 pounds. Dumb ass. For the next two years, KJ would keep doing this stupid ritual. Dumb ass. Unaware that he's destroying his back. Dumb ass. 
By 1996, he discovered he had another undiagnosed hernia, and needed surgery to repair both. Johnson still killed it in the playoffs, but his game slowly regressed by the mid to late 90s. And due to his hernias, he missed a ton of regular season games, during a time when the Suns were contending. It's sad to see, because these years were Barkley's best chance at winning the title, yet his best teammate was struggling to recover. With your dumb ass. Monte Ellis. Prior to the start of the 2008-9 season, Monte Ellis was somebody that the entire league was paying attention to. He was a second-round pick who made astronomical strides in his game within a few years. In the season prior, he put up incredible numbers, but what stood out was his ability to finish. The dude took 43% of his total shots at the basket. So basically he was Isaiah Thomas before Isaiah Thomas. Not the old one, but the one we got now. And hit them at an absurd 68% rate. For a guard? For a guy of his size? That's incredible. He was at the top of the league at his position. However, in the 2008 offseason, he signed a hefty six-year, $66 million deal. But shortly after that, he breached his contract by riding a moped, crashed, and severely injuring his ankle. Not only did he get suspended for 30 games, but that injury hampered his athleticism and speed. With your dumb ass. Ellis would miss most of the season, and when he came back, his playstyle changed. He still tried to attack the rim, but transitioned mainly into a mid-range player. His number of drives and attempts at the basket drastically fell, and as a result, his efficiency fell. Still, Ellis had some fantastic seasons afterwards, but he didn't look like the same guy as before. However, the most critical aspect of Monte's injury was the domino effect. Previously, the Warriors won 48 games, but with him sitting out and Baron Davis getting traded, the Warriors had a horrendous season. But by winning just 29 games, they were bad enough to get a high lottery pick, which they used to select Steph Curry. Now think about it this way, had Ellis not crashed his moped, he was primed to have a career season in Golden State, and definitely would have added a few more wins to the team, so they wouldn't be bad enough to draft Curry. Everything that happened. <laughs> he see Curry in that picture. Looked like he was still sucking on pacifiers at that point. Happened to Ellis indirectly oh, made them a championship team, even though he himself was never part of it. Also, honorable mention to Larry Bird. I'm sure you've heard the stories of how he'd constantly help his family shovel snow and even helped his mom build a new driveway. His back problems can be attributed to that, although I wouldn't necessarily say it was a stupid way to derail his career but he could have had a longer run if he hired somebody to do the job for him. All those back problems that ended his career early, it was mostly because of that. Anyway, that's all folks. Those were a bunch of players who suffered career-altering injuries in a stupid manner. Yeah, a bunch of retards that could have been great, except there wasn't. Well, except one, but the rest of them, dumbasses. Toodles! <laughs>